Hi guys. Hi, how are you? Hello, hello. Welcome to the channel. Um, I decided to try and have a different background <laughs> today, but we're still in my apartment, so fear not. Um, welcome new subscribers, old subscribers. Welcome to the channel. I hope you're all having a good day. It's been an interesting couple of days. You know, um, there's a couple of things that I needed to wrap my head around. I've just come back from the hairdressers. And she has done the most wonderful texture release for me. And honestly, this is my first experience getting a texture release. And it was honestly a lot cheaper than I expected it was going to be. I thought it was going to be huge, but it was only £200. And she did such a good job. She's fantastic. So, yeah, it should last, like, what, three months? So hopefully it should be still intact when me and she go to Poland next month. So, yeah, fingers crossed. Um... Honestly, <laughs> guys, I think there may have been some misunderstanding on my previous video, uh, the cost of living crisis video. So I wasn't making fun of people struggling. I wouldn't do that. Honestly, it doesn't benefit me. It doesn't benefit me to make fun of people struggling. Um, I think people got confused by what I was talking about. So when I was talking about people struggling, when I said it was ironic, what I mean is it's really ironic that people in developed countries have only started truly, really complaining about, and I'm talking about really the middle class. They've only started really complaining about, you know, inflation and stuff because now they're suffering it. People in developing countries and poor people in, you know, US, Europe, wherever, they've been screaming and crying about it, but no one's listened to them. But it's only now that people, you know, with good jobs and two parent, two income households, you know, it's only now that they're experiencing it that, you know, people are really talking about it. So, yeah, that was the irony. That was what I was talking about. Anyway, let's not get sidetracked with that. <sighs> Guys, you know, I had to come through with the camera Okay. <laughs> so today I want us to talk about the really juicy topic, which is weight black women and weight now there's been this rhetoric going around that black women need to lose weight to get husbands Ooh. okay first of all no losing weight and getting healthy and exercise and movement has nothing to do with getting a husband so it's got nothing to do with men. Men aren't involved in a conversation when we're talking about losing weight and, you know, getting healthy. Men aren't involved in this conversation. It's got nothing to do with them. When we're talking about, especially black women, and yes, in certain countries in the West, black women are, you know, overweight in the majority and obese. That's true. But... When we talk about getting healthy and taking care of our bodies, this has nothing to do with getting a husband. Okay, I love G very much. G loves me very, very, very much. And he's a good man. He deserves to be loved and respected because he treats me well. So that's what I do. But taking care of myself and my body it's got nothing to do with G, and it never has. He reaps the benefits of this. Yes, he enjoys, you know, the rewards of me taking care of myself, but it's got nothing to do with him, and it never has. And in the same way, I, I, I say to all black women as well, it's got nothing to do with getting a husband. You can have five husbands in this lifetime if you want. It's got nothing to do with any man keeping yourself fit, Keeping yourself, not even fit, forget about, just healthy, being in a healthy, because you can be a normal weight and you don't have to be a, a fitness guru. But keeping yourself in a healthy body is about making sure that your body doesn't become a prison. It's about making sure that your body doesn't become your tomb. About making sure that you don't become a living tomb. Okay? Movement is life. There is nothing 
and no no living thing on this planet that doesn't move human beings animals even plants turn to face the sun bacteria moves if you look underneath the microscope bacteria moves atoms move everything moves the only thing that doesn't move is a corpse that's it the only thing that doesn't move is a corpse or something that isn't living. That's it. Every living thing moves. Movement is life. If you lose the ability to move, you die. And this is why when people, you know, um, doctors prioritize people, when they lose use of their legs, the, the priority is, you know, always for them to get in a wheelchair or get a prosthetic. Because this person needs to be moving. The moment this person becomes bed bound or bound to one location is the moment they start to die. It's the moment they start to rot. That's it. If you cannot move, the end is near for you. That's what happens. That's what happens. Movement is life. It's very important. It's got nothing to do with husband. What husband? It's got nothing to do with that. It's about making sure that your body functions at the most optimal level it can be. Exercise isn't about losing weight. It's a tool, but exercise is really for your cardiovascular function, the function of your cardiovascular system, your heart, your lungs, improving lung capacity so that you can breathe properly and breathe well, you know, improving and making sure that the secretion of the hormone insulin is regulated inside your body. Exercise is so much more than just maintaining weight. It's for your health, your cardiac health, the regular beating of your heart, the strength of your heart. Your heart is supposed to be like a juicy steak. And exercise is what helps you get to that. It's got nothing to do with having a husband or having, who cares? It's about making sure your body is in the most optimal state it can be in so that you can live life without back pains, leg pains from additional weight. You see, what I want people to understand is that fat isn't the enemy. Fat isn't the enemy. Fat is necessary. It's about how much fat is on your body in relative constitution to the rest of what your body is made up of. So your organs, your bones, your blood and you know your muscle so when your fat starts to you know outweigh every other part of what makes up your body that's when fat becomes death so as of now every woman every human being needs fat and especially a woman you know this is responsible for you know estrogen and all the things that make you have periods and get pregnant you can't even get pregnant if you don't have enough fat in your body this is important. So fat isn't the enemy. It's not the enemy. It's how much. At the same time, there is a huge double standard when it comes to weight. There's a huge double standard, especially when it comes to weight in black women. You can be overweight, right? But your fat may be in desirable places in your body. And you will be seen as desirable, even though you are overweight. But then you could be very healthy, but the fat, you could be a healthy weight, but the fat isn't in the places that, you know, your bum, your legs, you know, your boobs. The fat may just be sitting in your stomach area, but you may still be of a healthy weight and you will be seen as unfit. You will be seen as unhealthy. That's a double standard. That's a double standard because any, it's very easy to be overweight on BMI, by the way. <laughs> BMI, I feel, is a terrible terrible measure of health. Do you know why? Because there are many people I see out on the street who look slim, but they may be five to 10 pounds overweight. Now, according to BMI, they are now overweight. That doesn't mean they're unhealthy. Five to 15 pounds of weight, being overweight, doesn't mean you're automatically suddenly unhealthy. I, you'd be surprised at how many slim people you see on the road who are 15 pounds overweight, even 20 pounds of weight, and you wouldn't even be able to tell. You would be incredibly surprised by this. So BMI is terrible in my opinion. I've always thought about waist size. Your waist and your body constitution, your fat body fat percentage, how much of your body is fat. 
and how and your waist size because there are people who are five or 15 20 pounds of a weight and still they're in the lowest risk category when it comes to weight when it comes to waste they're in the low risk category so they aren't at risk the fact that they have in their abdominal area isn't putting them at risk even though they are 15 to 20 pounds of weight so this is what i'm saying it's not about how it's not about being overweight it's how we're overweight when you start getting when the fat starts dominating you know other parts of your body that's when it becomes a problem now i think a lot of black women yes we do you know in terms of weight it's not you know where it should be but i think in general a lot of people a lot of human beings we struggle with accepting the truth for what it is and the truth is that we need to work on our bodies forever it can never stop until you die it's a very painful and horrible reality it's an extremely painful reality in fact when i when I, I used to get really mad at myself oh my god why do i have to work out why do i have to exercise why do i have to you know and i try my best to eat healthy but i don't always i don't always eat healthy i don't always sometimes i eat something you know that's you know greasy and sugary and whatever and that's okay it's fine everybody does that but there's this denial We're all, there's this huge problem in facing the reality of the fact that we must endeavor to take care of our bodies because people take for granted the mobility that they have you take for granted that you can move around you take for granted that you can turn your body, you can stamp your feet and you can move your hands. If you stop being able to do that, and you realise just how much mobility is important to just being alive. And a lot of people take this for granted. And a lot of people just can't seem to understand that you have to take care of yourself forever till you die. This is not something that you can just, you know, leave for a little while and then come back to it. Even if you take month breaks from exercise, from workouts, even if you take a year, a couple of years break, you're still going to have to come back to you at some point. It's never going away. And I think people try to fight this fact and that's what hurts them. They try to fight this reality and that's what causes the dissonance. That's what causes the eating disorders and the binging and the, and the frustration and the vomiting and the purging. And the, that's what causes all of it, this refusal this resistance to accept the truth and the reality about the fact that our bodies need to consistently be taken care of all the time. It's never, it's, it can never stop. It can never stop until we're dead. It can never stop. And this is a hard pill to swallow. It's very hard. It's very difficult for a lot of people. So, you know, no one says you have to be a gym head. You don't have to do that. I'm not a gym head. But you have to make activity, movement, important, an everyday part of your life. Now, people confuse exercise with working out. Working out, exercise isn't always work out at the gym. It can be something as simple as standing on the spot and just moving your legs. People used to do that during the pandemic when they couldn't get outside. They would just stand on the spot. If you do that for 30 minutes, that's exercise. If you walk up and down your apartment five times a day for five minutes at a time, that's exercise. It's about movement. It's simply about moving your body. That's it. And people got confused. You know, they think ob a lot of obese people, morbidly obese people, they feel that they must start going straight to the gym and busting ass. And, you know, you don't need to do that. You start at the fitness level that you're at. And a lot of people get confused about this. They want to go ham so hard, so fast. And it just leads to a lot of pain and injury, you know, and it also discourages someone. It does. And I think a lot of people also don't understand that just because the health effects haven't shown on your body, especially I'm saying this to black women, just because the health effects haven't shown on your body now doesn't mean it won't show on your body later. Even if you get healthy, you may still suffer from the consequences of when you treated your body badly all those years ago 
you may still not be able to escape the consequences of that. And I'll explain what I mean by that. I had anorexia for, mid, for about three years. And I've said it on my channel previously. I'm a healthy weight now, thank God. But I had anorexia for a couple of years. And I had it when I was young. And I had to work so hard to get myself back. And I still suffered the consequences of it later. I still experienced many terrible health consequences. Even when I got myself back to healthy weight as a result. Because sometimes even when you get yourself back, you've done the damage already. Just because you've taking yourself out of that doesn't mean that the damage hasn't been done the damage has been done already you cannot when damage has so when you break glass you cannot get the glass to go back together even if you sellotape it there's still cracks so when you've done damage to yourself there is no there's no there's nothing that says that you won't experience that later so even when you become morbidly obese and you lose weight and go back down to a healthy size there's no guarantee you won't suffer consequences from the time that you were morbidly obese. This is the this is the danger as well. This is why I always this is one of the reasons why people say the earlier you start taking care of yourself and your health, the better. It's got nothing to do with husband. It's got nothing to do with men. It's to do with your life. It's to do with your body. It's to do with you know feeling comfortable in yourself. A lot of people also don't seem to understand that, you know. Not only do you can you will you still probably suffer the consequences. Okay, for example, I was watching this documentary uh, with this. I think his name was Frank. I don't know if it was Frank Payne or something like that, or Frank. I can't remember his name. He was a comedian. He's dead now, unfortunately. He's a really, really. He seems like a really nice person. But he had he was eating ridiculous amounts of food. He was eating himself to death essentially because the word morbid it does mean death, and he was eating himself to death. He was having two boxes of pizza a day, you know, uh, five burgers, hot dogs, different things. Just a ridiculous amount of food that his body didn't need, eating about 10,000 calories a day. And essentially what happened is that even when he lost the weight, he ended up dying a few years later. And that could have, he ended up having a heart attack. And that also shows that you know, he, I think he added weight back. He lost the weight and that yo-yoing damages the body too. The crash diets, the yo-yoing, losing the weight, adding the weight, losing the weight, adding the weight. This is all a sign of a refusal to accept that you must take care of your body. When you refuse to accept this, you go back into habits that you were doing before and then you yo-yo and that damages the body and it damaged him because even when he lost the weight, the plaque had built up around his heart. And when you have plaque building up around your heart, it's not something that you can solve by losing weight. And this is what I was talking about when I said the damage is irreversible. The only thing that can remove plaque from your heart is heart surgery. You need a bypass. You need some sort of heart surgery because that, that hardens around the heart and stops blood flow, you know, and it stops your heart receiving oxygen. And he ended up having a heart attack at a very young age, 49, you know even after he'd lost the weight. So it's, and I'll, I'll give you another example. My uncle was a very rich man. He had a lot of fat in his midsection. And when you carry so much fat around your organs, this is death. This is death behind your abdominal wall. This is death. Like I said, fat isn't a, this is, fat is inherently isn't a bad thing. But when you carry excess amounts in constitution to the rest of your body, then that is when you are killing yourself. And my uncle, he he had he was a lovely man, but he had a lot of fat around his midsection. He ended up developing colon cancer, and he he was very rich. He flew around to Dubai, to Israel, everywhere, and they couldn't do anything for him. And he ended up passing away um, a couple of months later after. And this was 2018, and it was really terrible because upon all the money he had, the, he still couldn't, you know, the the consequences. He, you know, it was too late to start living a healthy lifestyle. It was too late to start taking care of himself and, 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 and being active and, you know, reducing that, uh, that excess around his midsection. It was too late for that. And a lot, this is what I want a lot of people to understand. A lot of people, especially obese, morbidly obese people, they believe because they're young that they can continue on as they are, you know, and 
you will be okay. But you can only put your body through so much suffering. And I, I say this as someone who's a former anorexic. If I hadn't stopped being anorexic, I would probably be dead or infertile. That that's it's as simple as that. And I was even fortunate. And I, I just said I still suffered the consequences of it. I still suffered the consequences because you can't just because you you fix yourself and heal doesn't mean you still won't experience what you did to yourself. You see, it takes a long time for the body to heal. From, it takes a long time. The same hell you put yourself, your body through is the same hell that you experience when you're taking yourself out of what you put your body through. And it was just really sad. It was really, really sad. You know, um, a lot of people don't understand, right, that in this life, the abuse of, the misuse of anything becomes the abuse of it. When you abuse food, this binging, this binge eating, this starving, this purging, this vomiting. This is all addiction. Addiction to trauma, addiction to suffering, addiction to even addiction, even a, even addiction to anger. It's all addiction. Addiction to food, addiction to anger, addiction to porn, addiction to internet, addiction to you know um alcohol, addiction to drug. When you misuse something, you abuse it. Then it becomes the abuse. All of these things you can have them in moderation but when you abuse when you misuse them then it becomes abuse then you start destroying yourself with it and you know a lot of people don't understand that they lack self-control a lot of people don't even understand what self-control is how do you know that you lack self-control first of all you need to know that what you're doing is wrong to your body if you don't know then how can you change you know when i was anorexic i had no clue that what I was doing was unhealthy because I thought I was trying to be healthy because I started off in a healthy manner. As soon as I snapped out of it and realized, God, what on earth are you doing to yourself? Then it was easy for me to stop because I knew and I made that choice. And I didn't, that's why I didn't need a clinic or anything. I just stopped. When you lack self-control, you know how you lack self-control? When you know, you know that taking that binging will hurt you and destroy your body. You know that drinking that glass of alcohol will destroy you. You know that taking that drug will kill you. And you know that, you know, watching that porn will make you miserable. You know that, you know, purging and vomiting and all of that will make you miserable. You know that getting angry will cause you to hurt someone and put yourself in danger and put other people in danger and you still go ahead and do it. This is a lack. This is one of the basic fundamental lacks of self-control because you know something will not do something. You know it won't be good for you, but you, you still go ahead. You still can't stop. And this is also a refusal to accept the truth about life. This is another refusal to accept. It's very difficult. And I think a lot of people really struggle with understanding this basic fact in that if you misuse anything it it becomes a slave you become a slave to it it has power over you as simple as that and people forget that they have a choice people really forget especially when it comes to food if you study buddhism now i am i am not a buddhist i i don't belong to the buddhism religion i am actually a christian but i was reading up on the tenets of mindful eating in buddhism and they actually talk about how you need to chew food. You need to chew your bites at least 25 times. And obviously, depending on what you eat. And this isn't, this isn't just so that your body will, your brain will register when you're full. But this is also to, you know, stop you from choking to death. Because there are many people that choke to death, right? Unnecessarily because they don't chew their food enough. And sometimes the food goes down the wrong hole. You know, some people eat so fast, they don't even realize they've not chewed their food enough. And, and actually, if you read up on the tenets of mindful eating in days, and there's so many gems there, so many gems, definitely. I will link the documentary to that guy who tried to lose weight and he lost it and still died. I'll, I'll link that to this, to this video because it's very good for you guys to watch. But I want us women especially to understand that Forget about what the men are saying. The only point they have is that we have to lose weight in terms of keeping ourselves healthy. But it's not to get a husband. It's not to get a boyfriend. A boyfriend that you can have 50 of them in this lifetime. It's got nothing to do with that. It's about 
taking care of yourself, believing that your body, you know, deserves to walk around comfortable, whole. Okay, so look at it this way. It's complete madness. If somebody asked me, hey, Tessie, can I bring this suitcase? Can I bring the suitcase? I'm going to bring a suitcase, actually, because I, I want to demonstrate this. Somebody comes to me and says, hey, bring this suitcase, pack it full of potatoes and strap it to my midsection. And I want you to go through life with a big suitcase full of potatoes on your midsection. That is essentially what morbid obesity is. That's what you're doing. You're strapping a huge, a huge suitcase of potatoes to your midsection. And you're saying, I'm going to go through life like that. I'm going to walk, I'm going to run, I'm going to eat, I'm going to jump, I'm going to do everything with a huge suitcase of potatoes, pounds and pounds and pounds and pounds of potatoes. On to, that, that's a nightmare. If somebody told you to do that, would you do it? Would you be able to do it? You'd think, no, that's freaking crazy. Of course I don't want to go around with a huge suitcase of potatoes trapped in my midsection. That's essentially what you're doing. And a lot of people, now this is not to say that morbidly obese people you know, they deserve respect. Obese people, people who are struggling, especially black women who are struggling, they deserve respect. These are still your teachers. These are still your therapists. These are still your lawyers. These are still people that will help you in your day-to-day -day life. You know, they deserve every bit of respect every other human being deserves. But at the same time, we also have to understand why it has become so normal for people to abuse themselves and, you know, for it to just be seen as okay to abuse yourself until you die. It's so painful. It's so painful because truthfully, it's not meant to be like that. The body, right, can do so much. And when you get older, you're supposed to be able to enjoy your life and look back on how you used your body and how you were able to move around and do things, you know, oh yeah, I was a spiry little thing. But more and more of us can't do that anymore these days more and more people especially black women are dying younger bearing in mind right that honestly um a lot of people even in are not even living into their 60s and 70s because of diseases caused by obesity cardiovascular diseases and you know excess weight this is how my landlord died my landlord died of excess of a heart attack he had fluid in his heart built up from excess fat in his chest and stomach and that essentially suffocated him his heart was drowning in fluid and you know he was warned time and time again you need to be more active you need to sleep better because sleep is also very important you need to sleep better you need to be careful you know and he's he just didn't heed the warnings and just fell down dead one day. There was there was one um, there was one uh, story I was reading. This lady, she had like a horrible death, final destination level, right? Um, she was on her bed because she, she was morbidly obese, and she was literally sleeping on like a bed made out of boxes. I think she was being taken care of by her husband, who was old and probably struggling himself. And you know, when you're taking care of someone on your own. Sometimes things can be left out, things can be bypassed because you're doing so much that you might forget one or two things, especially if you don't have help, you know, from a social worker. So I think one of the boxes must have come out of place and her husband wasn't there to help her. And one of the boxes come out and this lady just went flying off the boxes of the bed of boxes. She went off flying and hit her hip on a chair and died a few days later and this is why i keep saying more when you lose mobility death is soon to follow you it's as simple as that it's as simple as that when you lose mobility is why you see all those comatose patients on the bed death is soon to follow because when you can't move when you can't move you can't live it's as simple as that it's as simple as that and this is a woman who was in her 60s she's supposed to be walking around your, in your 60s, is like your golden years. The years between 60 and 80 is the years where I think you can have the most fun because you're, you've got the money, but you've still got your senses. You've still got health to some point that you're able to walk around and have fun, you know, but you've got the money and you've got the knowledge of a life well lived. 
and she was supposed to be living a life well lived instead she was literally he had literally eaten herself to death you know and died in such a horribly unnecessary way and i don't want that for us black women i don't want that for us i really don't um we deserve better than that um and it's got nothing to do with husband it's got nothing to do with men who cares you know this isn't when we're talking about health and exercise this is about making sure our bodies do not become our prisons and our tombs our bodies you know just walking around you have back pain you have leg pain you're in agony you can't even see bend down and touch your toes you can't even see your toes you know you're you've got there are literally sometimes when i've seen some of these tiktoks there are, you know this you have space between your ear and your shoulder some people have literally gotten to the stage where there is no more space between their ear and their shoulder and the, there is now fat built up here this is you're carrying death around on your body remember when i talked about the the bag of potatoes just carrying that around imagine living life like that and one of the reasons why i try to take care of myself isn't because i care about attention from guys i don't give a shit about that it's about being comfortable in myself i cannot stand to be uncomfortable in my own body to feel like my body can't work like it can't function you know people get confused between aerobic and anaerobic exercise aerobic exercise uses oxygen so things like cardio swimming this is why people who are even a healthy weight they have some people who are healthy weight they have poor cardiac health because you still need to work you still need to exercise still need to be active even if your weight is low you still need to be active you still need to eat properly you still need to eat things that will help you nourish you nourish you you still need to be active this is why people who you know even when they're healthy weight they struggle to climb a flight of stairs they struggle even people who you know um and a lot of people like i said they get confused between aerobic and aerobic and aerobic Aerobic exercise is good for cardiovascular maintenance, maintenance of your heart, your lungs, all the things that help you breathe. Anaerobic exercise, things like weightlifting, you know, doing stuff at the gym, that's good for building muscle. Not so much for car cardiovascular maintenance, but good for building muscle, you know, and when you build muscle, the more muscle you build, the more fat that will burn when you're at rest. So that's good in short bursts. That's like short bursts of exercise that doesn't require, you know, um, like sprinting. Like when you sprint, that's an aerobic exercise. So um, a lot of people get confused between the two. You don't need to do anaerobic exercise. You don't need to bust your ass. All you need to do is be active. Just walk. Just walk. Even a couple of times a week. Even, I think... You know, even just standing on the spot, you don't even need to leave your house. You don't even need to bath to be active. This is like, I'm just going to the bare basics here. Um, and I think a lot of people just get confused, you know. And I want, the only thing that the men have got right when they're talking about black women losing weight is just that black women in general need to lose weight and become healthy. That's it. That's the only thing. Everything else, getting a husband, that's got, blah, blah, blah. no one cares about that. It's got nothing to do with your life. This is your life. You have to make the choice to decide that you want to live in a body that can allow you to jump, run, you know, swim. You know, just do things, take care of yourself. And this is this not only will this save your life, but this will save your life. I'll give you an example. I have a, some I, I know someone who was telling me that like one co-worker years ago, years ago, he was telling she was telling me like that her aunt almost died in a house fire her aunt almost died in a house fire because she was immobile she couldn't move because she had eaten herself to immobility and her partner couldn't carry her and they needed six men to come and carry her and the ambulance wasn't you know there was a blockage on the road the ambulance couldn't get there in time she almost burned to death because she couldn't get herself out and because no one could get her out. No one could carry her. If, if as, you know, women, we want to be able to move around with ease, have, you know, take care of ourselves and be happy in ourselves, we need to be able to move. We need to be able to move at a moment's notice. If someone says, if, if it's time to go, it's time to go. If there's danger, it's time to move. 
you know, we need to be able to do this. And I think that that's that when my co when my coworker well my coworker years ago told me about that that was really disturbing to me that she would have just burnt to death because she couldn't get out of the bed because she physically couldn't get out of bed and she had to rely on six very grown muscular men very muscular men these are not men of these are not ordinary men these are not like average men these men were like probably six foot two two hundred pounds and they he needed six people to carry her this is this is disturbing you know this is a human soul here who can't even transport themselves from one place to another from even one room to another you know so when we talk about weight you know if we're talking about if we're talking about things that <laughs> you know if we really want to talk about looking good for a guy then we should talk about bbls bbls have nothing to do with health you do not need a bbl to be healthy it's got nothing to do with health or weight um, the excess fat that's in your stomach that you're shifting to your bum or legs, it's still excess fat. It's still there. You're still going to need exercise to get rid of that excess fat. Exercise An exercise and diet that you should have been doing in the first place, even before the BBL. BBL is purely for aesthetics. If we're talking about stuff to do that will attract men, it's, it's BBL. But when we're talking about health and fitness, this has getting a husband has no place in this conversation no place this is simply about doing what you need to do for your life so that you can live without your body becoming a living coffin that's literally it that's literally it that's literally it and you know i do feel sorry for obese more super morbidly obese people people who are suffering these people are suffering and i can see the agony and this is why i and i understand why when a lot of people start exercising and morbidly obese people they start crying because they realize the agony that they have put they realize the suffering that they've caused their body you see whatever you do to your body your body will do back to you when you when you put your body through hell years and years it's going to take years and years to get your body out of that hell and you're going to experience every second of it because the body has been suffering you know i've realized just as food rots we also rot you know we do everything to preserve the food we have we put it in freezers we put it in fridge we consume food so what makes us think that we don't have to preserve ourselves the way we preserve food i i it honestly boggles boggles the mind it boggles the mind we do everything to preserve our food but we don't do everything to preserve ourselves it's so sad it's so sad and i want to see more black women really you know taking our health seriously, not for some guys or whatever, but because we deserve to have the best possible health, life and mobility, mobility. That's what I am all about, mobility. The ability to move is such a blessing. People don't understand until they lose their mobility to move. That's when it really hits them, you know? And um, yeah, I'll give you an example. My dad was a soldier back in 1967, the Briafran War. My dad was a soldier. Um, and during that period, my dad got separated from his platoon in the jungle. And my dad had always kept very good care of himself. And he had to survive in the jungle. He had to eat insects and all kinds of things. I'm very lucky to be here. It's fate that I was born because my dad could have been killed in the war. <laughs> and, you know, I just wouldn't be here. So it's definitely, it was meant to be. And put it that way and when my dad was finally rescued he was taken to the israeli doctors and my dad's deaf in one ear because of the bomb blast he had a bomb he, he stepped on a bomb and shrapnel cut in his leg and he was taken to um the hospital the israeli doctors who were fantastic by the way they operated on him and they told him sir your body is in a fantastic condition and that is why you are still alive because he was in the jungle for days. He was supposed to be dead from dehydration. They said, sir, your body is in great condition. And that is why you're alive. And even then, we're not sure if you're going to be able to run again. When I was 16, my dad beat me in a race. And he was 50, in his late 50s, and he beat me in a race. To, and he was running to show you that when you take care of yourself, your body will reward you years later even when you might be going through times where you aren't able to take care of yourself the previous years that you took care of yourself your body will reward you for this 
doesn't mean that obviously you know you may not just you may get horrible diseases and die there are people who are healthy who get horrible diseases and die for whatever reason that's very unfortunate and that happens you know people who run marathons although i'm not really sure why people think running marathons regularly is healthy i personally don't think it is but um you know there are people who get people who do who are extremely extremely active although i feel like when you're when you're doing exercise too much that can also become abuse of exercise it can also become an addiction but there are people who are you know active and they still get diseases but on average if you try your best your body will reward you for this your body will try at least you know and um yeah my dad was able to take care of himself gosh i think this is going to be the first video that passes 40 minutes my 40 minute rule and just because it's such an important topic this will be the only video I hope that passes my 40 minute rule. But there was just so much to say about this topic. There's so much to talk about when it comes to weight and black women. But yeah, I want us to all do our best to take care of ourselves um, and take care of our bodies, you know. And look, we all make, we all stumble and fall, but we have to understand this fundamental reality that we have to take care of ourselves you know it's never gonna go away it's never gonna go away you know you can make mistakes eat eat the bad things eat the good things nothing is bad anyway I don't think anything is truly bad to eat it's just how many how how you eat it do you overeat it do you, do you abuse it you know people we need we need therapy in this community because even the overeating doesn't quench the agony the agony, the internal suffering, when you overeat, you're trying to quench, you're going to the fridge, you're opening the cupboard, opening the cupboard five times a day to see if something new is there. You're opening the fridge 20 times to see if there's something new. There's nothing new in the fridge, nothing new. The same things you bought before is what's there. And there's this, there's this obsession, there's this spirit that's moving a lot of people. You know, people are suffering and the overeating, the self-medicating with drugs, with alcohol, with anger, with sex, with food, with vomiting, with purging, with it doesn't it doesn't quench the suffering that people are going through. It doesn't quench the agony. It doesn't stop. It doesn't stop the pain that people are experiencing. So it's not working. Then we need to do something else. We need to change the way we do things because what this self-medication, the things we're doing, it's not working. It's not working. It's not making us happy and it's all it's doing is killing us faster and leading to awful, miserable lives while you're still alive. So, yeah, we need to just, I, I want us black women especially, honestly, anyone can take this message, but I want us black women especially really to truly understand that our bodies is our body. If you, if you don't take care of it, nobody will suffer it but you. People, your friends and family, they will cry, they will cry, they will be sad. But at the end of the day, you will suffer it on your own. It's got nothing to do with husband. It's got nothing to do with boyfriend. It's about understanding that you have the choice to, be, to, to take care of yourself, to be alive and to enjoy your body while you can. You know, because tomorrow is not promised and you never know what's going to happen. So... Do you want to enjoy your body while you can? Or do you just want it to just waste away? If you don't use it, you will lose it. Simple. If you don't use your body and be active, you will lose it. It's as simple as that. So I want all of us to take care of ourselves and get the therapy that we need to quench the pain that is inside. Because when, look, the healing, right, before somebody is destroying themselves, their mind has been destroyed. Before they have destroyed their body, their mind has been destroyed. So before you heal your body, your mind has to be healed. Because when you heal the body, finally, the healing will eventually show. When you heal the mind, the healing will eventually show on the body. Before anyone gets to the path of self-destruction, the brain and the mind has already been destroyed. So before you can heal your body, your mind has to be healed. So I hope we all have healing. If you didn't find healing 2023, I hope you find healing in 2024. That's all I have to say. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Oh, I've really gone past my 40 minutes, which is very uncharacteristic for me. But what can I say? I'm out here looking and feeling like somebody's rich auntie. So yes, I love, 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 love this texture. -ease. 
God bless you all. Thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you for subscribing. And don't forget to like and comment. And yeah, I hope you all have a fantastic day. Oh, and also one last thing. I measured my waist recently and discovered that my waist was 29 inches, which I'm very proud of. But it wasn't to do with the fact that, oh, I have a smaller waist, so I'm going to try. I didn't give a shit about that. It was about the fact that I was now in the low risk category, you know, when it comes to like waist size. So this is what I mean when I say your healing and your, your health must always be for your own satisfaction. It must always be for your own happiness. That's it. That's all I have to say. Take care, everybody. Bye.